Let's set up a scenario on a seemingly routine IFR flight. We're southbound towards the Oceanside VOR with a destination of McClellan Palomars near San Diego. The ATIS is showing winds out of the southwest with runway 24 in use. Let's have a look at our approach options. There's a bit of a marine layer, so we won't be trying to go in with a visual approach. The airport has seven approaches. Let's say for argument that the ILS and VOR approaches are notum to closed. That leaves us three approaches for runway 24, X-ray, Yankee, and Zulu. Multiple straight-in approaches to a runway like this are given the names Zulu and then Yankee and X-ray in that order. Which one should we choose? RNAV Zulu is what's known as an RNP approach, standing for Required Navigation Performance. You can see this in the approach title in parenthesis. Most of the time, we're used to seeing GPS here in parenthesis for an RNAV approach. In the minimum section, it says authorization required. Do we have authorization? Well, if you need to ask, you probably don't have it. The requirement for these RNP approaches are that your navigation system be very precise. Notice the RNP point 0.1 and point 0.3 in the minimum section. These refer to the course sensitivity. Most of us in GA are working with less sensitivity than this, even those of us with WAS-enabled units. The extra sensitivity allows the navigation system to navigate us along a tight curve between Palchi and Egive at only 3,200 feet, only about 1,500 feet above obstructions and terrain on either side. So the precision is vital. So the Zulu is out. What about Yankee? In parenthesis, it says GPS, not RNP, and there's no authorization required note in the minimum section. Instead, the familiar LPV and LNAV acronyms are there, which most IFR-capable GPSs can do and nothing in the notes precludes us from using this approach. But look at where the approach starts from. The initial approach fixes are at Dunby and Zazog, well to the east, while we're coming in from Oceanside, which is along the coastline to the north. We'd have to go way out of our way to do this approach. This is because we can't navigate the tight turns and high terrain closer in, like on the Zulu, since we don't have the extra precision. Let's look at our last option, the RNAV X-ray. Again, it says GPS in the parenthesis and has the familiar acronyms LPV and LNAV in the minimum section. But a very careful reading of the notes is needed because it's easy to miss this. RF required. RF is radius to fix. This is defined in the AIM as a constant radius circular path around a defined turn center that terminates at a fix. On this approach here, the radius to fix begins at Jidov and ends at Kanek. It maintains an arc that's a constant distance from an unlisted point on the approach. A constant arc turn will keep us on this course. Our GPS unit needs to be able to navigate us along this arc. This is doing something very similar to what the tight turn on the RNAV RNP Zulu approach did, but notice the altitudes are much higher. We don't have the precision here to go in low and tight. So can we do this approach? It depends what kind of GPS unit we have. Here, we're flying the Garmin G1000 NXI in a Cessna 172. Consult your specific unit's manual because even the same type of navigation system in a similar aircraft may not be capable of flying radius to fix legs. If you're able to, your unit will show you the RF required approach in the list of procedures, as here we see the RNAV GPS X ray to runway 24, and it includes Jidov, Fepi, and Kanek, the fixes along the route. Let's say we're working with a panel-mounted unit like a Garmin GTN650. Our unit won't support the radius to fix leg type, so when we go to load an approach, we don't see the X-ray, only the Yankee into runway 24. We load that, selecting vectors, and hope we can get ATC to give us a vector that isn't too far out to the east over the mountains. Back in the G1000, we fly to Oceanside, then in along the feeder route to Vista, the initial approach fix. We fly on to Jidov. Once we pass over that, we begin the curve. The flight director is on and the autopilot is set to track the GPS, so we'll follow the pink triangle for a very slight one or two degree bank angle along the curve. This is very similar to a DME arc. In fact, the symbol on the PFD is not unlike what the G1000 would show on a DME arc. What it's not is a standard rate turn or a protected course reversal like on a procedure turn. Whether we're going 100 knots or 180 knots, we follow the exact same course laid out by the radius to fix. Crossing FEPI, we can descend to 4300, but we're still flying the same curve on the radius to fix. We'll follow that all the way around until we reach Kanek, and we should reach Kanek and roll out on the inbound course of 245 at the same time. After that, we're established inbound, we descend to 3100, which is glide slope intercept, assuming we're using the LPV minimums, and when the glide slope comes in, we follow that down to minimums. 
Radius to fix doesn't present any added challenges in flying an approach, but it can be a constraint if your unit isn't properly equipped. The best way to tell if you can fly a radius to fix approach is to look at your navigation unit's approved manual to see if such leg types are allowed or if there are any special constraints. Again, check to see if the approach is even available on your unit and actually verify that what's loaded into your unit is what you see on the approach plate and is what you can expect to fly. The best IFR pilots are always learning, which you can do with Flight Insight Online Ground Schools, whether you're a new instrument student getting ready for a check ride and knowledge test, or a seasoned pro looking for a refresh. Check it out at the link here or in the description today.